Let's make one of the most basic circuits you can make. I'm just going to use a resistor and an LED and a 9 volt battery. And I'm going to rotate that 9 volt battery by using my tool up here, clicking on that several times, and then click and hold on it to center this stuff up a little bit more. And then let's just connect these. And if you don't know it right now, you will sooner or later know that the LED has to be connected a certain way. It's got polarity on it, otherwise it will not work. The resistor can be connected either way. It has no polarity. So it can be connected to plus or minus, doesn't matter. I'm going to arrange my LED in such a way that will allow a little bit cleaner wiring. And I just happen to know from previous experience which way to rotate this. So I'm going to rotate it that way and then I'm going to put my resistor up here. So let's clean this up just a little bit more. Okay, now all we have to do is run the wires. So I'm going to go click on the negative terminal of the battery. And by the way, if you've moved your battery around or if you've clicked on it or whatever, you don't know what the polarity is of the two connection points there. But if you click away from the battery, it will light up with red and black. So you know red is positive, black is negative, and you know which is which here. I'm going to click on black and run my wire up to the cathode of the LED. And if you don't know if the cathode is negative or the anode is negative, or you don't even know what those words are at this point, it doesn't matter. The beauty of this software is that you can connect it however you want. And if it doesn't work, you can just swap it and see if that works. That's really one of the things that I love so much about this program. But continuing on, so I've connected the negative terminal and I'm going to change that wire color to black because that's traditionally the color for ground or negative. Green can be used too, that's fairly common. And then I'm going to connect my red terminal to the other side of my circuit here. And I'm going to click out here and go up here and click again. And then finally I'm going to connect to the resistor. And now you can see why I clicked. I set points there that allow me to drag these things around later and set a nice clean vertical and horizontal line so that my wiring looks good. So you don't have what's called a rat's nest of just jumbled wires everywhere. Okay, traditionally red is, is the color for positive, so I'm going to change that wire color. And then if you click away from it, the points go away. And then all I have to do is connect a wire from the resistor to the LED to complete our circuit. And that wire color um, intermediate wires typically uh, I'll make them yellow or something and there I've got a, a pretty clean circuit my verticals aren't perfect here so if you, you know if you want to nitpick you can move these things around a little bit and if you want a really nice clean circuit you know it's pretty close okay so that should work the way that we run our circuit then in the real world this would be if you had it hooked up properly the LED would be lit right now but in Tinkercad in order to make things happen, we click this button that says Start Simulation. And notice it lights up. There are certain things you can do when your simulation is running, and there are certain things you cannot do. So you kind of want to keep an eye on that. So there we go. We started the circuit, and the LED is lit. So I was lucky and connected everything properly the first time. Way to go, Bob. Now, just as an example, I'll show you what will happen if you connect that LED incorrectly. I'm just going to click on it. And now I'm going to press the delete key on my keyboard and send that stuff away. And notice the start simulation green went away because our simulation is no longer running. So I'm going to drag an LED out here again. And this time I'm going to connect the LED incorrectly. And I'm going to use the R on my keyboard to rotate this this time. And now I'm going to connect my negative lead to the anode of the LED this time. Change that color to black. You can change this color anytime you want to, but it's just a little bit more efficient if you change it while you're working on it. And then I'm going to run a wire from my resistor to the cathode, and I'm going to change that intermediate color to yellow again. And now I'm going to run the simulation, and let's see what happens. Now it's running, but the LED is not lit. So all I have to do is swap it and it will light. Again, no harm, no foul. It doesn't matter with an LED which way you connect it. So in the real world or in this software, you just swap it. So it's easy just to delete it and replace it. And because I don't want to end this video showing you a faulty circuit, I'm going to fix it and then wrap this up. And in order to fix it, I could delete it and rewire it. 
That's certainly one way, but that's another thing that I really like about this software is you can just use the undo option and just undo a lot of stuff that you previously did and you don't have to do all the rewiring. You can just let undo be your friend. So I'm just going to do control Z a bunch of times on my keyboard. I have to stop the simulation first. Then I'm going to do control Z a bunch of times and I'm just going to keep doing it until I get the right circuit back in place. And then I'm going to start the simulation and voila, the LED lights again. So there you go, the world's simplest circuit using Tinkercad circuits. Be sure and check my other videos as we progress along down these other options that we can use to build more and more circuits, and we'll get more and more sophisticated as we go along. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see the other videos as I upload them, be sure and click on the subscribe box and then click on the little bell and choose all. I'll see you on the next video.